Welcome to Edgewater House, a home being built to the Passive House and LEED Platinum Building Standards in Maine. We begin The Big Dig with Sean Woods of Woods Home and Land doing the site preparation and excavation. Hello, Sean. Um, the first thing you did was install the silt fencing, which was really important to us because we're right on the river here. Um, so how did, how, did, uh, how did you do the silt fencing? Uh, typically we purchase the higher quality material for jobs like this. Um, this stuff is made of a higher dense mesh fiber weave uh, over a typical fabric style woven product. Um, just due to the fact that we knew that we had to be at our utmost for the erosion control on the river. Um, simply walk the property, find the outermost barriers of where the disturbed area will be and then uh, create your small trench six or so inches deep in those areas. Uh, try not to disturb any of the vegetation that you don't anticipate altering later. And then uh, simply install the fence with a laborer and an excavator uh, by means of just driving the stakes into the soil. Uh, upon backfilling, just make sure that the lower flap is retained underneath at least four or five inches to keep that from popping out and eliminating the uh, factor of control. We also took the chippings that were on site and took advantage of those uh, in the areas where we would anticipate heavier water flow to puddle uh, just because of the sheer weight factor of water against the fence does create a, a collapse factor so we wanted to try and slow that down with a little bit of a barrier in front and uh, it seemed to do pretty well with the extensive rain that we had. Yeah, we should, you, did, you did a great job Sean because we had uh, over the last uh, four days we had, uh, in this area, we had well over six inches of rain. And having walked the property, uh, the perimeter where the silt fencing is, there was no blowouts, there was no sedimentation that came through. It was 100% effect. taken down uh, about 35 or so pine trees last year, so you had to pull those up. How did that go? Correct. Uh, pine trees are actually, uh, they can be either uh, your best friend or your worst enemy when it comes to pulling off, depending on their age uh, and the soil conditions. They either root shallow in ledgy outcroppings or they root deep in softer soils like we have here. Um, so they did pull up pretty tough. A lot of them were intermingled with one another because they were in close groupings. Uh, so a lot of times it was more of a prying and breaking them apart to get them out of the ground. Uh, but uh, it usually gets accomplished pretty easy with the larger machines. And uh, making sure that you shake all the dirt out of the roots prior to hauling them away is important as well to reduce weight. And also when they go to the recycling facility, they're not as dirty for uh, reclamation. The actual digging begins. Sean has set up a laser transit and with the help of his assistant, Isaac, will continuously measure the depth of the cut to ensure that the bottom of the hole is both flat and within one quarter inch of the design depth. The subsoil is a clean mix of sand and some clay. It is being hauled away to be sold as fill elsewhere. The laser finder emits a distinctive sound indicating if the depth is too low, too high, or just right. Note how Sean has flattened the top rim of the hole to make it easy and safe for people to walk around. Hmm, I didn't expect to see persistent standing water. The perimeter drain will take care of that. This has become a very big hole. The big dig is done for the full basement. We still need to excavate for the slab on grade portions of the three season room 
the garage, the front porch, and the sewer and perimeter drain lines. We asked the surveyors to stake out the corners of the building to make sure we complied with all setback restrictions. They set the flags before the water had accumulated. Check out our next video when we do footers and perimeter vents and drains.